I really think that more people should be making their own hot chocolate. It's actually super quick and not that much harder to make than instant hot chocolate, but it's so much richer and more flavorful. So to make it, just start by heating up two cups of milk over medium heat and whisking in 24 grams or two tablespoons of granulated sugar. So this is going to end up making two servings of hot chocolate, and I prefer to use whole milk because of its extra richness, but you could of course use any type that you like. So just let that mixture come up to a light simmer, which should take about five minutes, and be sure to stir occasionally so the milk doesn't burn. Then once it's nice and hot, you'll want to whisk in 90 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. For the chocolate chips that I have here, 90 grams is about 3 eighths of a cup, but that'll depend on the specific type of chocolate that you're using. You could also use a dark chocolate here if you prefer, but you would just want to add a bit more sugar in that case to bring it up to the same sweetness level. Either way, just whisk in the chocolate until it's completely dissolved, which should only take about 30 seconds to a minute. Then finally, whisk in 8 grams or about 1.5 tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, which is really going to give it that distinct hot chocolatey flavor. And that's all there is to it. It's that easy to make a homemade hot chocolate completely from scratch, and it's going to be so much tastier than any instant hot chocolate mix. But for those of you that want to take your hot chocolate to the next level, we're also going to make a Mexican hot chocolate. Now the process is largely the same as the basic hot chocolate, so we'll again start by heating up 2 cups of milk over medium heat, but this time we'll add 42 grams of dark brown sugar to add a bit of extra depth of flavor. Then at this point, we're going to add our spices, and for this recipe, that'll be cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, and cayenne pepper. So I'm going to use my mortar and pestle to crush up 6 whole cloves, along with 1.5 whole cinnamon sticks, just to release a bit more surface area before adding them to the milk. They're going to get strained out at the end, so don't worry about crushing them down super finely. Then I'll add about 1 quarter nut of freshly grated nutmeg, which would be about 1 quarter teaspoon if you're using pre-ground nutmeg, along with 1 eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. But as I said, you can customize this however you like, so for example, it would also be great with about 1 8 teaspoon of allspice in place of the nutmeg, or you could leave out the cayenne if you don't like the combination of chocolate and chili pepper, and so on. Now I'm also just going to add a small amount of vanilla here, and again I'd recommend using fresh ingredients whenever possible. So in this case, I'm scraping out the vanilla from about 1 half of a vanilla bean, and adding that into the pot as well. But you could also just use 1 half teaspoon of vanilla extract instead if that's all you have. Then just thoroughly whisk those all in, and again let that mixture come up to a simmer. Then it's finally time to add the chocolate, but this time we're using 120 grams of dark chocolate, which is about 1 half cup. So just whisk that in for a minute or so until it's completely dissolved, and at that point all that's left to do is run it through a fine mesh strainer to remove our excess spices. I like to top it with either some marshmallows or some fresh whipped cream, which I showed you how to make in my pumpkin pie video, so I'll also leave that recipe in the description below. Then just top it with some more grated chocolate, cinnamon, or nutmeg, and enjoy. And if you also want to learn how to make some eggnog for the holidays, be sure to click that video in the bottom right corner of the screen.